What's the word, y'all? I had a hair appointment today, so I don't know if we're going hatless or am I rocking the backwards snap. Let's rock the backwards snap. Okay, so today was one of those days where we had an 11-game slate. And obviously, a brother can only watch so much. There's like five games that tipped off at the same time. And the, the thing that be getting me is obviously since I'm a Bulls fan, I focus on the Bulls more than other games. So when you have four of the games plus the Bulls, the Bulls have his own monitor. I get the four... I'm talking about a lot of games today, so if I don't talk about your favorite team, my apologies. Long season. Leave a like, subscribe, let's get into it. Let's start off with the Portland Trail Blazers um, ending their road trip 0-3. Losing to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, we talked about the Portland Trailblazers and Dame on the last episode, but I want to reiterate some things. We were speculating whether or not Damian Lillard was injured because in the Olympics, he was dealing with this core injury, and that's why he shot 30% in the Olympics or 35% in the Olympics, and he started off this uh, year slow. Basically, after the game, he admitted, like, yeah, my core injury has flared up again, and he didn't use that as an excuse why he sucks right now. I mean, he sucks for his standard, obviously, um, why he's not playing well right now, but we know. Like, the core is the the mechanism that runs the whole body is that how it works yes so we're not gonna talk about portland but let's spin the block and we're gonna talk about the cleveland cavaliers because no laurie no kevin love no isaac okoro and they win a game against a playoff team a team that's used to be in a playoff i don't know if they do it this year a playoff team they decided, like, listen, we normally run three seven-footers, and one of our seven-footers is in health to safety protocol. Get well soon to those guys. So let's, instead of getting uh, Dylan Windler or Jetty Osmond, who are real-life small forwards, let's go get another huge dude to add to the starting lineup and Dean Wade. And Dean Wade plays solid today. Um, the Cavaliers been a surprising team for the season. And, and I had to go back because I remember them winning some quality games. They have had the ninth-hardest schedule in the league so far. And they've won a good amount of games. You know, Evan Mobley in this one had another good one. It was possessed late in this game where the, the Trailblazers are making a comeback and Evan Mobley switched on to Damian Lillard. Again, it's not prime Damian Lillard or the best version of Damian Lillard, but he held his own and got a stop. And in the very last possession of the game was hilarious to me because I think it was Jetty Osmond who was guarding Damian Lillard. Then they ran a pick and roll and then they got the fro on him. Who would I rather try to score on? Jetty Osmond or the fro? Give me Jetty Osmond 100% of the time. The fro is different, man. Sexland look good. I made a tweet like five days ago where I, I made an NBA All-Star ballot and number one on my list was Ricky Rubio. He has not hit a shot since that day. But still, his playmaking has been elite. The Cavaliers are funny because, of course, they're dealing with a lot of injuries and stuff for his health and safety protocol. These boys basically ran a seven-man rotation in, like, the sixth game of the season. They are going for these wins. And they, you know, they have one of the youngest teams in the league, so the legs can hold on. But I want to focus on Jared Allen for a quick minute before we move on to the next game. Because when he got paid, um, there, there are people on both sides of the coin, right? Some people saw that, like, yes, Jared Allen is really good, and he projects to be even better. But there are other people, like, y'all just gave max money to the... 12th best center in the league like again me and my guys every single season rank NBA players and going into this year I don't know if any of us had Jared Allen as at least the 10th best center in the league now so far this year he has showed that he can be that but in the moment people like you gave max money to a dude that don't look like he gonna be in a great center in an era where the center ball unless you have the best of the best is kind of non you know non-existent Cavs were anti that they said we're gonna give him a seven-footer max contract, we're going to get another seven-footer big contract, we're going to draft the third seven-footer, and they're all going to play together. And it's going to work. Um, the Cavaliers also started off pretty solid last year, so we will see if it keeps up. Shout out to them. Next game, we had the New York Knicks lose into Miles Turner. Look at that. The, the Indiana Pacers got relatively healthy. They got uh, uh, Malcolm Brogdon back, and Karis Avert played his second game, and it was his best game coming back. And they win a game. <laughs> once you once you look at that now they're still missing like uh, tj warren and everything um but i was one of the people that was somewhat panicking about their early um lack of success but then i you know i had to come to the realization they were missing so many players so once they get completely healthy then we'll really see but this is a very quality win for them the other day i recorded an episode of this it was the day that og on and put up 36 on the knicks right that was what three days ago or so and sometimes i record these videos and i talk for so long but i i, I take some of it out so I'm going to play you a clip when I was talking about the Knicks a couple nights ago that was still relevant today. The first thing is I low-key fear, two weeks into the season, take it with a grain of salt, that the, the version of Julius Randle we're getting right now is not last year all-NBA version, but the year before, which was like, he's cool, but he ain't been on that next level. You know, and in this game, I just wanted the ball to go to RJ Barrett a little bit more. You know, especially with Julius Randle kind of doing what he's doing today. Um, I, I felt like he, he's always going to be a player that shows his emotions with his body. 
So when he's really having to kill a game, he gonna show you that he's having to kill a game. And when he is struggling slash the team is struggling, you can see it all in here. And today was one of those days where the shoulders were down, hair was kind of down. And I was thinking to myself, give it, give it to RJ, give the ball to RJ. So we shall see. Um, the Knicks have also come down to earth when it comes to their three-point shooting. Early in the season, we made a video talking about how they were shooting an extreme amount of threes and, and hitting those threes. And today they were five for 24. They didn't play great defense, which is no, that's a Knicks thing slash Tom Thibodeau thing. They haven't played great defenses the last couple days. So, you know, I'm sure they'll get it back on track, but the last couple games, not looking amazing. The Bulls, oh, oh my bull. I'm wearing a Bulls shirt. Lose to a, a team that was missing Ben Simmons, obviously, Tobias Harris, and Danny Green. They were missing three starters and the Bulls went into Philly and they had a comeback they had a little comeback but Philly stopped all of that um and Joel Embiid didn't have a great scoring game he ended up with 18 points 33 percent from the field and the Bulls lose this game um not a, not a great loss at the end of the day it's hard to be the team two times in a row and we got y'all again on Saturday so we shall see we're at home this time around um quickly on the Bulls DeMar DeRose has been amazing Zach Levine has to has to get better with his tunnel vision he gets He's a player similar to Julius Randle, where when he is frustrated, you can definitely see it. And he was frustrated in this game because he wasn't getting a lot of calls. Matisse Steibel had his, had his ass clamped up. Um, and in this one, he got tunnel vision late in the game where we probably could have scored and could have changed the momentum around. He'll get better with that. He's still dealing with the thumb injury, and he's been solid. Um, Lonzo Ball had his worst game as a Chicago Bull. And Nikola Vucevic did not get any touches whatsoever. Seven shots for a guy that we traded for to be an offensive threat. We're not paying him to be a defensive player. And they did, they, they did not allow him to get into an offensive flow. I think overall, his defense on on Joel Embiid in like one-on-one -on -one situations really good like I mentioned 33 percent from the field for him but as a how do how do I say this on Joel Embiid one-on-one -on -one, he was good but like in pick and roll situations I want him to be a little bit better I don't know if that's the drop coverage that we run but it just feels like he's never getting the contest on pick and roll and that just left like uh Seth Curry and and Shake Melton to get a lot of mid-range jump shots whenever they needed to but I want to focus more not about the Bulls losing this but more focus on the 76ers because this is not the the only time they've done something like this they I think they beat the Knicks if I'm not mistaken recently it was not the Knicks it was the Trailblazers I'm thinking about and then the Atlanta Hawks so they beat some really quality teams so far this year without them having some of their best players. And this season could have gone a couple of different ways for them, right? With the Ben Simmons thing that, that basically took control of the entire offseason for everybody, you, you could see this organization, this team, this roster come out flat-footed because of everything that's going on. No, these boys who, who may not have got as much PT the last couple of seasons because they've been behind this and that, really came out and they're showing their worth. George Niang has been one of the greater pickups of the entire offseason. He burnt us today. And what he he scored 20 something in the previous game and they was chanting his name MVP. Shout out to George Niang. Um Forcock Corkmas can light it up and we already mentioned Matisse Steibel's def defensive impact. Um people are really wondering what the defense was going to look like without Ben Simmons on the court because the Ben Simmons is a defense player of the year candidate. Defense has been good still, but the offense has been better. Joel Embiid did not have a good scoring night. But his presence with four shooters is elite. <laughs> his playmaker today, there was a play where Matisse Steibel, like, like somebody was asleep on a uh, back door. Matisse Steibel crept down to the basket. Joel Embiid, quick pass. Matisse Steibel, layup. You know what I'm saying? Put Joel Embiid around shooters and he'll make it work. Today was one of those days. So we'll see. We'll see y'all on Saturday, but this is a very good win for them. I'm, I've been impressed with the 76ers so far this year. The Raptors, five game win streak. Five game win streak. Now, again, we talked about them a couple nights ago and I cut it out the video. So let me reiterate some of the things that I've seen about the Raptors. Um, all right, Gordon Drogic played, what, the first three or four games with them and they told him to stay at home. And since then, they have not lost a game. Um, they decided to let the Banton kid get all the Gordon Drogic minutes. He's been making the most out of it. I think he's the first. I, I was listening to their broadcast the other day. He is the first Canadian-born player to get drafted by the Raptors. It was happening in the second round. I didn't know this man existed until a couple nights ago. He's been really good for them. Um, they've been missing Scotty Barnes. They won the other night without Scotty, and that was OG and Obi's 36. Of course, Pascal is still out. We, we still ain't seen Pascal. And they're on the, what, the, the longest win streak in the league right now? Five-game win streak? I think most people, including me, underestimated how solid this team could be. <laughs> how solid this team could be will they come back down to earth eventually I don't, I don't even know how much of what we're seeing right now is the real deal i see their defense and i'm like that is real because i know freddie i know gary i know og and now scotty barnes are good defenders to elite defenders i know that's gonna be the case but we sh i was thinking that their offense didn't have enough creators for it to be a competent offense but guess what kyle Lowry 
been teaching Fred Van Vliet for what, four seasons? How to be a leader and the focal point of an off offense and being the driving force of an offense? And he's been doing that. Today, he was getting to the mid-range area. Looked like He legitimately looked like Kyle Lowry out there. Now, he um he definitely is a lot more trigger happy than Kyle Lowry ever was, but that's okay. He's, dare I say, a better scorer than Kyle Lowry? I don't know. You, you decide that. But you get what I'm saying. This team has been really fun to watch. Um, and they, they take out another team, a playoff team in the Washington Wizards. Maybe, I don't know. I don't really know what to think about the Washington Wizards anymore. They lost another game. But shout out to the Raptors. Fima Kailuk has been an amazing pickup for them so far. Uh, Kim Birch, I don't know how I haven't mentioned his name because he's very under the radar, coming off the bench, backup center. They paid him. And he's been playing way better than Precious Achuya. That's what my eyes are seeing. Um, but I think it's better for him to come off the bench and really do the second unit thing. Precious is a player that you want to play because he was the Kyle Lowry piece, basically, other than Goran Dragic, who you sent home anyway. So you want to see Precious Achuya play, considering he's also, what, 21 years old. But Kim Birch, really good, bro. Now, this is a game that I get to watch completely, but I'm going to talk about the moments that I did get to see, and this was the Nuggets losing to the Grizzlies. First of all, I cannot believe that the Jokic shot did not go in. It looked like a bunny, but it did not. I want to shine some light on Jaron Jackson Jr. because he had been... Actually, him and Michael Porter Jr. are on my most disappointing players of the season so far. And then Grizzly fans were mad at me because I guess when Jaron on the court, the offense is this plus diff point differential. I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about that. I was talking about his individual performances have been, have been lackluster. And I was listening to Chris Vernon on the mismatch. He is a diehard Memphis Grizzlies fan. He goes to all these games and stuff. And this is the second time um, the Grizzlies and the Nuggets played against each other this season. And he was talking about Michael Porter Jr., who's been disappointing, and Jaron Jackson Jr., who's been disappointed. What do they have in common? They both got big old $100 million extensions. And he was talking about how there could be little added pressure when, when you're off that rookie contract and now you're expected to perform to a $100 million valuation. Um, and, and so far, those two players have been disappointing to me. And this was a big game for Jared. And hopefully this is a step in the right direction. You didn't have an amazing John McGrath game, even though he was... He was super, you know, electric when it comes to making highlights. He didn't have a great individual game, but Jaron was there. Desmond Bain has been one of the most consistent players in the NBA. And early in this game, I think DeAnthony Milne had like seven points in the first quarter. I'm like, oh, they got this. And they did. Jaron, more than anything, I'm impressed. He had eight rebounds. That might be a career high. I ain't never seen him get eight rebounds before. One of his better games. I'm not going to say best game because I'm pretty sure he had a 40 pieces rookie season or sophomore season. Um, Denver's offense is, is not as good as I expected it to be. Now, I know they're missing Jamal Murray, but I still had high expectations for the offense. Believe it or not, their defense is the best they, it's been in a long time. Let me look at these numbers. Yeah, Denver has the 24th offense and the 5th best defense. Who would have expected that from this roster? Um, they still haven't figured out, or Michael Porter Jr. hasn't figured out it completely, but this might have been his best game in a season. Even with that said, he had 12 points on 12 attempts. But this might have been his best game of the season. That lets you know how bad he had been. Whew, so much basketball. Oh, Dallas. Dallas beat the Spurs. The Spurs get another heartbreaking loss. But I'm telling y'all, Spurs fan, listen, it's okay to be good enough for three and a half quarters and, and lose a game. Especially you got some player. I don't know much about college ball, but I heard there was a, there was a dude in Gonzaga, a lanky center small forward type guy that's really good that you might want. Um, DeJounte Murray's been just like the only bright spot. I listen, I'm giving, I'm giving a little bit of credit to Jason Kidd today specifically, even though for the most part, even though the Dallas Mavericks have what a five and three record, they look terrible. I can't explain it to you. They look terrible. Um, today he put Boban Marjanovic in the game because Jakobotus out with health and safety protocols. And now it's like to, um, Thaddeus Young as the center backup center. Now, let's go eat Bobby and Bobby did exactly that and he was one of the driving forces uh, the last couple minutes was very interesting because I had never really seen Luca play so off ball than what he did today because Jalen Brunson Illinois boy by the way I um, was killing the game 31 points and I think at the end of the game he ended up with like 11 straight killing it I like the idea of Luca playing a little bit off the ball. Now, this was a little bit different because when he's playing off the ball, he literally wasn't doing anything but sitting in the corner. But to take the pressure off of Luca is important. And Jalen Brunson, he started the last couple games. He's at 25 plus in both. I don't know that when X player comes back from his injury, whoever that might be, whenever it be Porzingis or whoever, that you tell Jalen, you're going back to the bench to be our spark plug. He looks good alongside Luca. You might have to figure something else out, you know, in the lineup. But yeah. They don't look great, though. Even with their above 500 record. I can't explain it. When I watch them, I don't see a great-looking team. Yeah, the eye test is telling me... The numbers that are backing up my eye test. They're 26th. They are 26th 
in offense and 20th in defense. The worst spread differential in the entire league. And they're and they're five and three. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, well, oh, straight the schedule. Let's go see, let's go see it. So they beat the Raptors, the Rockets, the Spurs twice, and the Kings. But they've lost to the Heat, the Nuggets, and the Hawks. So they're beating the teams they should beat, which is a good thing. Um, but it seems like when there's like a legitimate competition in front of them, they haven't been able to put it together. So almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Miles Bridges versus Jordan Poole. And Jordan Poole ended up with the win. Y'all thought it was a Steph Curry game? Nah, it wasn't. It was a, a pool party. I'm going to say it again. And the Hornets got wet up. I cannot wait. They showed the graphic that it's been two and a half years since we've seen Klay Thompson on the court. Two and a half years. It, it's crazy. And when I see him warming up in his full jersey, it feels like a myth that he'll be he'll ever play again. I can't wait to see him. And because I think this team is already like you can see they're really good. Even though they've had their easiest strength to schedule. I've looked at strength to schedule pretty heavily today, so that's why I'm saying it a lot. They've had the easiest schedule in the league so far. Um, but you gotta take care of the teams that are that are bad because that's how you make the playoffs. Um They look really good right now without him. And you add him to the Add him to the bunch. Even if you're getting 60% of Klay Tops instead of the, the 100%. Because uh, let's be honest. He's probably not going to come back and be the same Klay. It's been two and a half years. It's been since June of 2019. Is that two and a half years? Close to two and a half years. That's a very long time without playing real life basketball. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm excited to see him come back. They were also mentioning how James Wiseman has been cleared. And oh, I'm so curious to see how that goes. Because last year... With James Wiseman on the court, they were they were not very good. And when they started to go on that run, that ended up in having them in the playing game was after James Wiseman went out with an injury, and they could basically play the five out spread game that they usually do. I'm very curious to see how James Wiseman is reincorporated. You know, reincorporating Clay Thompson is easy. Let him play. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's been on the team his entire career. But James Wiseman, on the other hand, I don't really know um, how that's gonna go. Um, uh, Gary Payton the second. You know what I'm saying? There was this crazy statistic about Gary Payton and his defense, how he how he generates a steal every time he's in the game. Today he had three of them things. He had a poster. Big minutes for him. Big moments for him. They were chanting his name at the end of the game. Because I guess he's a Bay Area, area legend. I don't even know what they were talking about on the broadcast. But Miles Bridges, Mr. Bet on himself. Nope, nope, that's still Fred Van Vliet. But another player to bet on himself, a 32-piece for him today. Um, they In the third quarter, they went super stale, and they carried over completely, and they lost. And the last game I got to see um, were the, was the Pelicans versus the Kings. Now, y'all know I've been rocking with prize picks. Shout out to my presenting sponsor. I, I've taken the over on Rashawn Holmes' rebounds all season long, and he's never let me down. Today he got ejected on some real-life BS, two rebounds away from hitting the over. I had four entries today. Three of my four hit, and the only one that didn't hit was the one Rashawn got ejected. But they rallied. They, they, they took that anger that he, he had getting ejected and ended up pulling together a win. This is a good game for De'Aaron because low-key De'Aaron Fox has been one of the most disappointing players in the entire league. But today, stat line looked like 4 from 14 from the field, 19, uh, 19 points. He had a big three late in the game. Uh, Reese, Tyrese Halliburton was everywhere. 20 points, 4 steals, 2 blocks, 7 assists. Davion Mitchell had another good performance. Uh, this is a good team win for Harrison Barnes and his squad. I don't know what to say or think about the Pels. Obviously, they still have Brandon Ingram out, who's a game time decision, and Zion. I, uh, I don't even. Never mind. Let's just not talk about it. I think I got to every game except for three, and even in those three games, I watched bits and pieces of, but not enough to even really talk about. You know, DeAndre Hunter was elite, but Kevin Durant exists, so boom, there's a win. No, you know what? The Brooklyn Nets bench showed up a lot today. And there was a report earlier today, I think Woj retweeted, I don't know politics, so maybe there's an election going on, I don't really know, where New York is going to revisit their vaccination um, rules, which might open the door for Kyrie Irving to come back sooner rather than later. And the way they play tonight, and when that bench, the way they played, you add, you add a Kyrie Irving, James Harden's playmaking looked elite again, like earlier in the season, I don't really know. Okay, that's it. Uh, my light went, okay, yes, per it's perfect timing. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Okay, bye.